What the business is, YouTube family? Back with another Sticky Situation TV presents. How y'all like that new intro though? Let me know in the comments right now. I'm gonna miss my old original intros, but I wanted something more unique that no one else has in the world. So I came up with that. Real quick, before we start this video, please subscribe to my channel right now if you haven't already. I'm trying to hit 50k subscribers within the next couple months. Shout out to all my supporters. I really appreciate everything and all the love and support. I got so much dope stuff in the works right now. I'm working on a documentary about a popular rapper from California that was gunned down in 2022. I got the blessings from his mom and dad. They're helping me with the documentary. And I'm getting the real story from his own family and friends. It's going to be an honor to do this story. I can't wait for y'all to see it. Anyways, let's get to the video. So on my platform, I don't only like to speak about the big dogs in the industry. I also like to talk about the underground rappers and I use my platform to remember the forgotten and just artists that I really rock with whether if they're big in the industry or just independent. Regardless, y'all gonna learn about a lot of new stuff that you never really hear about. This rapper I'm speaking about today was an upcoming Latino artist that was definitely making his way to the top until the unthinkable happened to him back in 2020 when the pandemic was at its peak. This rap artist went by the rap name Mac P Dog, but also went by the name Joshi. Mac P Dog was born on January 14, 1996. Real name Joshua Andrade Galvez. Mac P Dog is from Los Angeles, California, where he was raised at his whole life, and he grew up in the Virgil Village section of East Hollywood in Los Angeles. Mac P Dog went to Marshall High School in LA, where he would meet the rapper Phoenix Flexen, and the two would become good friends. At this time, Phoenix Flexen was already rapping, making music with the rapper Ojeezy, who was going to Hollywood High School in LA. Phoenix Flexen would introduce Mac P Dog to Ojeezy, and they would all become good friends. From the time they all started hanging together, they would all bond and gravitate towards each other, building one of the biggest movements LA has seen in a while. Mac P Dog was not yet rapping at this time. He would just be around OGZ and Phoenix Flexin and would vibe out with them while they would make music in the house. He always had a love for hip hop and was a big fan of Wiz Khalifa. After high school, Phoenix Flexin, OGZ and Mac P Dog would all work at a movie theater while Phoenix and OGZ was just rapping on the side not really making anything big out of it. They soon would all quit their jobs. Phoenix Flexin and OGZ began taking rap more serious. One day at one of the homies house, Phoenix Flexin and OGZ would be recording. While they were doing their thing, Mac P Dog was in the cuts with a notepad writing out some verses. Phoenix told him to rap it, and after he heard it, he liked what he heard, and they ended up recording it. After two takes, they would come up with their first song with Phoenix Flexing called Half and Half, which did a million views in three months. It was an instant success, but Mac P Dog still wouldn't take rapping serious for another year after he dropped Half and Half. But Phoenix Flexing and OGZ would be coming up hard forming the rap group Shoreline Mafia and having a successful 2017 changing the sound of LA rap. This would be around the same time rapper Draco the Ruler and the Sting team would be coming up strong changing the whole rap scene in LA. OGZ and Phoenix would encourage Mac P Dog to rap and promised him that they would bring him along once they make it in music. In May 2018, Atlantic Record announced that they had signed Shoreline Mafia. This was a big deal for the group. While Mac P Dog wasn't still taking rap serious, he would be hustling making money on the streets. But after so long with just hustling the streets, taking these big risks in life, Mac P Dog would dabble into rap again about a year after he dropped a successful song Half and Half. One night February 2019, he would pull up to his boy studio session Dirt Rich just to chill out and vibe. But that night, he recorded another hit out the blue that he was featured on called Money Walk with Dirt Rich. From then on, he would start taking rap seriously. His fan base would go all the way up and he would start dropping more consistently. Shoreline Mafia would be at its prime in them days, going on tour, making LA look good, putting their stamp in the rap game. Later in 2019, Rob Vicious and Master Kato started not showing up to the Shoreline tours. And it would only be Phoenix, OGZ, and Mac P Dog that would be hitting these tours in 2019. Mac P Dog would open up for Phoenix Flexin and OGZ on their OTX tour. Shoreline would do an interview where you can clearly tell something wasn't right. Even though Shoreline Mafia might have been going through whatever issues at the time, Mac P Dog would still be dropping bangers on his own YouTube channel and they would all be doing numbers. 
he even would be doing his own solo interviews himself. It seemed like he was really trying to stay consistent and moving up in his rap career. Everything seemed to be working out for him. Fast forward to April 6, the unexpected would happen. This is where the story turns dark. While the world was quarantined and suffering from the pandemic, everyone would wake up to Phoenix Flexen announcing on Twitter that he was going to leave the group after Shoreline Mafia signed a major deal with Atlantic Records less than two years ago. He mentioned that he regretted signing a group deal instead of an individual deal. But this issue wouldn't be the topic of bad news for too long. Around six hours later the same night, Phoenix Flex would receive a random phone call from a young boy telling him that he was at a laundromat and that his friend Mac p Dog was shot. Phoenix Flexen thought it was a prank call at first, but then he would find out the truth after watching the news. Police were called with the report that two people in a vehicle were shot at. When police arrived, they found Mac p Dog and his girlfriend shot in East Hollywood, Koreatown area of Beverly Boulevard in front of a laundromat with their dog in the car. When police pulled up to the scene, they found Mac p Dog sitting in the driver's seat vehicle with bullet holes through the window and with his head all the way back facing up, still wearing a COVID mask. He was hit multiple times in the head and neck area and succumbed to his injuries passing away on the scene and the vehicle. His girlfriend was rushed to the hospital critical condition. Mac p Dog was also robbed after being hit up. This part of East Hollywood area is dominated by the C-14 Sureño gang also known as Clayton 14, one of the oldest barrios in LA. Matt p Dog was left sitting in the car unalived for hours while being filmed by police and news outlets. No one was arrested for this incident. The next day, a news clip was uploaded of a video on YouTube where they show Matt p Dog's lifeless body in a car with his dog still alive barking in the vehicle. Fatal shooting in Koreatown. Two people have been shot. Let's go upstairs to Stu Medell at Sky 9 with the very latest. So, Stu, where is this exactly? Well, Jeff and Susie, this is happening right at the corner of Beverly and Hobart. And just about almost 30 minutes ago, as you said, shots were fired. One person loses their life here in that vehicle in the center of the screen, and a second person taken to a local hospital in critical condition. Now, the female victim that was taken to the hospital, like we said, in critical condition, is talking to officers, and again, they don't have a motive, but they do know the suspect is on the loose. Homicide detectives are on the way. Again, two people shot, one losing their life out here in Koreatown at the corner of Hobart and Beverly in front of a laundromat. Live in Sky 9, I'm Stu Mandel, back to you two in the studio. Back. This would be a devastating time for Phoenix Flexing and Ojeezy. Not only did they just break up as the biggest rap group coming out of LA, ending one of the dopest eras of LA's rap scene, but they both lost a very close friend. Phoenix Flexing went live that same night speaking about both situations. He was going through it tough and even said he's been crying all day. He would also confirm his departure with Shoreline Mafia. My niggas and took my nigga, bro. I can't believe this shit, man. Like, fuck all that rap shit, man. Nigga, my nigga gone, bro. I mean, niggas out of tears, bro. Nigga been crying, nigga. I, shit, you feel me? Nigga sliding too, though, you know what I mean? Shit, I, I didn't even need to get in all that, but shit, you know what I mean? Shit just really crazy to me, bro. That's my nigga, nigga, yeah. But yeah, I'm done with the group, bro. I ain't part of the group no more, you feel me? I done got love for all the accomplishments we done made over the years, you know what I mean? Shit, what we created, you know what I mean, but shit, I gotta like, you know what I mean, I gotta do my own shit, and then, you know what I mean, get, work, work on something that's in my favor, you feel me, like, niggas gotta get it too, you know what I mean, shit, niggas got whole families and kids out here. As soon as all this was unfolding, Phoenix Flexen and Mac P-Dog's Ops number 9 from TYB Cartel would jump online dissing Phoenix. Rumors would come out as if he was involved with the unalivement of Mac P-Dog. It is believed that this was just a clout chasing move. It was also said that Mac P-Dog was hit
because a plug from a certain gang was allegedly robbed for a lot of lean by Mac P Dog's partners Frankie and Tay Fetty. It was also believed that Mac P Dog was allegedly involved in that incident, but I'm not sure how true that would be. Another theory a lot of people believe is that the rapper CJ Soul from C14 is the person that allegedly set up Mac P Dog to get hit up and robbed. Not only did Mac P Dog get hit in CJ Soul's hood, CJ was one of the first people to find out what happened to Mac P-Dog. CJ's cousin was at the laundry mat when Mac P-Dog got hit. When CJ's cousin found out what happened, he called CJ and told him the bad news. After that, CJ called Phoenix Flexen and told him what had just happened. Soon after, Mac P-Dog's homies would supposedly point the finger at CJ. Mac P-Dog's homies would believe and tell everyone that CJ soul set up Mac P-Dog. This would cause a lot of confusion and CJ would start getting blacklisted by other rappers and producers. This would also hurt CJ's rap career, but he would still move forward with rapping. CJ Soul would recently do an interview where he would explain his whole frustration with the whole situation. Oh, long live Mac P-Dog. Um, someone caught him in a bad situation somewhere mm -hmm. in Hollywood. It was in your hood. Mm -hmm. So what's up with that? Like, I'm going to put it to you like this, bro. People... Some people be pussies, bro, right? So it's like, no, I no, I didn't, you feel me? Obviously set my homie up to get, bro, you know what I'm saying? I ain't have no parts of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, I don't even get down like that, bro. Like, if you know me, bro, and if you've ever been around me, bro, and you my homie, bro, and I've considered you a friend, bro, his homies tried to spin the narrative. If I, him, you feel me? I was my boy, I was hanging out with him. This was around when Shoreline broke up. He helped me and fight 30. His homies are, are pussy, bro, because it's like this, bro. They not going to do nothing about it for bro. They not finna slide for bro. So what they finna do is try to blame it on somebody that they know they can't do nothing to anyway. Oh, he did it, but like, because regardless, they not finna do nothing. But like all the fake, you know what I'm saying? There was fake sliding and shit, bro. The dude who did it, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't even, feel me? I don't even know if he did it or not. But the dude that they're saying allegedly did it is in jail and been in jail for like two days, three days after. It was also rumored that Mac P Dog was taken out by Culver City, a known Sudeño gang. Culver City gang members allegedly claimed that hit. Also, some believe that it was Sudeños from SFV and Pacoima that did the hit over Tay Fetty running off with some lean. Even though there are so many rumors and theories, it is a fact that Mac P Dog's homies and family know the real truth of what happened and knows who was responsible for the hit. Phoenix Flexen was on an interview and he said how he knows exactly what happened. The same day that you announced that you weren't really Shoreline anymore was the same day that Mac P got killed. Bro, that shit was crazy, bro. That's that still crazy sequence of events right there. Bro, I wanted to watch. Yeah, it was, it was shit changed my life, bro. As y'all know, man, P Dog was a real important person to me, man. I was, I've known bro for a long ass time. Shit, 09, 08, I think it was. He was in like eighth grade, shit, like middle school. He was in eighth grade. You guys shit. met each other in high school? Yeah, I, I met him at a McDonald's. He was in high school. He was in middle school. I was in my. I was a freshman, mm -hmm. so I was a grade older than him. Man, I, that shit just. I don't even. That shit freaked me the fuck out. Like shit threw me off. You know what I'm saying? Made me want to. I don't know. Yeah. All type of shit. So I'm saying, it I'm just gonna talk. About. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure there's all kinds of emotions associated with it, but it was weird because we were all like in their group chats talking about you leaving Shoreline, and then all of a sudden it's like holy. I think something happened to P Dog and Bro, when I got that call, I was in like I was in line at a at a Vons. I just had my whole groceries, but I just walk out, bro. I was, bro, I was shaking and shit. I mean, I've had homies die, I've had like people die, but you know what I'm saying? Bro was really like an important person to me, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And like I mean I took him to the I ain't taking you know what I'm saying, like I had taken him to the studio for his first time. We didn't did our first record. I'm like I was you know what I'm saying, I just I was telling him like just giving him free game before like bro he was but before bro had even started making music i was like you know what i'm saying he he had the look he had the followers you know what i'm saying he had all the hoes all the, you know what i'm saying he was a fly ass young like i like, bro, you got everything it takes to rap like if yeah. you start if you put out a song you gonna go like so we did went to the studio it was the first time i did a little health and bottom his verse you know what i'm saying we put that shit out man went up and then uh the rest was history we all fucking you know what i'm saying we got, we got go getter song we got the breakdown which he's on Man, good times, good good vintage. I and miss bro energy so much. Like that shit really, f that shit really f me. Right, and I mean he didn't even like gang bang or nothing like that. And then I mean he was in. His, nah, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't got a gangbang right. to have, like, real beef in these streets. You know but what I'm saying? do you feel like, in a, in a way, that it was, like, the attention that he was getting through his music and through being associated with Shoreline that, like, ultimately kind of put a spotlight on him to no, certain people? No, I know exactly people? what happened. It had nothing to do with that. Okay. It wasn't, like... Because I, I just imagine that there's got to be, like, jealousy when somebody like him is getting a lot I mean, of attention. Sure, a, bum ass, a bum ass is always going to be a hater. You know what I'm saying? But, uh... It, it get, it get, it, bro was for sure jealous and shit, but it run a lot deeper than what that was. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure bro was shit. Who wouldn't be jealous of my nigga? You know what I'm saying? Like doing, yeah. his thing, like doing his thing. And you really, some niggas can't stomach that shit. Yeah, that's super sad. Man, man, I, should, I, I got bro tatted right here on my hand. You know? RIP, you know I miss you with a passion. passion. Whoever thought that they would catch my nigga lacking. Lack. That's my player, that's my partner. my partner. When we find out who done did it, we gon' drop it. April 15th, 2020. Phoenix Flexin dropped a dope track on YouTube that was tribute to Mac P Dog called R.I.P. Mac P Dog. This is now at over 7 million views on YouTube. For my nigga, we gon' get them niggas back. I love you, baby boy. I think we all do. I wish I could book the studio and call you. We made history. In this track, Phoenix Flexin lets it all out and lets all the emotions hit and promised whoever responsible for Mac P Dog's death that it will be avenged. Such a dope song, though. If you never heard it, make sure you check it out right now. It's on YouTube. That was one of my best friends growing up. That I met, bro, 2008, I think, two, two, oh, 2008. Yeah, 2009, 2008. Uh, we was with the same high school, like, same area. You know right. what I'm saying? Same friends and everything. Uh, I was going down, like, the... We was walking down the hill, right? Like, type at our school type. And I seen a big-ass commotion. I'm like, what the f*** going on over here? It looks like somebody, like, fighting it. I go over there, it's P Dog, little ass squaring up with some tall. And then, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was my first intro. And then, like, I just chopped it. He did his thing, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say if he won or lost, but you yeah. know what I'm saying? After, I'm like, that's right, nigga. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mac P Dog's girlfriend healed from her injuries and fortunately survived. It has been four years and the police still never arrest anyone. And it is believed that his homies never got revenge. In December 2023, OGZ and Phoenix Flexin reunited and got together and performed together at one of OGZ's shows. The fans went crazy and it had been all good ever since. You do realize we just made history tonight, right? We made history. Um, so go on, we back in action, bro. Phoenix. It's all right. Mafia, man. Back, at it, back, back at it, back at it, right? Man. Back at it like a crack addict, man. If you didn't come to the show, you missed out. You know what I mean? It was sold out. So, I mean, a lot of y'all didn't get y'all a chance to come, but you know what I mean? Many more to come. That's all I'm finna say. That shit felt like a big ass house party. Yeah, all right. Shit, it's our first time I've been on stage in the damn near four or five years. How does that feel like to, you know, now? It's, it's crazy because look, look, it's not like we practice or rehearse or nothing. You seen the chemistry out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's natural. Like, niggas just rocking. Make some noise in this bitch. Turn us up one time. It's muscle memory at that. How was I with that? I feel like the last time I went to a show with you guys was back like literally like four or five years ago. It was nah, like an hour away, and now to see it had to you know, five years ago. Think about it. Twenty uh, mm -hmm. last show was in twenty nineteen. Two years. How did this link up happen? Like who hit who up? Like you know how did you guys put this back together? Talking. We just been mutually talking. We're talking like you know likes. We've been talking, but we've been keeping it low key. Oh God. Um, we not camera ass nigga. We letting you rock right now. You know niggas. Not, right, I really right. seen you guys really grown like so much. You know individually, you guys have grown in your careers, and I Man, think it's like the so. most. Perfect time for you guys to nah, come back and exactly. get fans. That's what I was telling, bro. I'm like, bro, we've been guessing us so much individually. I'm like, once we get back in the studio, we, we and we like, you know, mutually hey. on the grind, we about to be guessing each other up. Yo, one, two, three, six, this ain't a First session, we not. What three out the park, nigga? Yeah. Already bang. So this like, sessions already have it. Let's just keep it to <laughs> Definitely a big shout out to Phoenix Flex and an OGZ for reuniting together and making history. Can't just hate each other forever. So much time has passed already, and they weren't even able to support each other throughout the murder of Mac P Dog in 2020. That year was the end of such a dope movement they started from that day, April 6, 2020. And what brought it all back is when Draco the Ruler got released in November 2020 and instantly started going hard. But that all took a tragic ending in December 2021 when he got stabbed to death while being jumped over 60 plus bloods in LA. I have a dope Draco the Ruler documentary coming out soon, so y'all be on the lookout for that one.
Phoenix Flexin and OGZ also lost another close friend right after Mac P Dog. That was definitely a difficult year for the both of them. Anyways, I'm gonna end the story there. Rest in peace to Mac P Dog. I've been doing a lot of documentaries on forgotten rappers who passed away and rappers that no one has ever done videos about. There ain't no video about Mac P Dog out there, so I wanted to be the first to do it. He was a dope rapper and I love to see Latinos come up. I always support my people and it was good to see him on the come up when he was alive. So like, comment, and subscribe to my channel right now if you're new to the channel. Also, let me know who you want me to do next. And let me know if you like my new intro. Let me know in the comments right now what you think about it. Anyways, I'm going to end it there. This was a Sticky Situation TV production. And until next time, I'm out. Yeah. Phoenix and OG's always told me, like, bro, just, bro, we finna take you with us. Like, just yeah. keep dropping shit, keep dropping shit. And I was like, nah, this, I'm not feeling it like that. Yeah. And then throughout the time, that's when, like, Kato pulled up. That's yeah. when Rob pulled up. And it was just a different scene, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. when the music was really serious. Yeah. And then I was like, fuck it. Like, I might as well just throw in my two cents, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, this day, I think we was doing the No Jumper show, and I was one of the artists opening up. Uh, Frankie right next to me, that's my man, that's my hype man, always going crazy on the stage. Um, this was like at the first time when I was really like doing my own show, so I think this was like my second opening show, and the crowd loved it. It was going crazy, yeah, hell yeah. R.I.P. You know I miss you with a passion. passion. Whoever thought that they would catch my nigga lacking. That's my player, that's my partner. When we find out who done did it, we gon' drop.